Here's a read through of the Thanksgiving nest. In the deepest part of the forest, somewhere quite far away from where you or I live, the leaves had already changed color and were fluttering silently to the earthen floor. Most of the birds had followed the warmer weather south, save for Natalie Nuthatch, Wanda Woodpecker, and Caleb Cardinal. The bears had just finished gathering leaves into the dens for their winter beds, and the squirrels were burying the very last of the autumn acorns. The forest was a beautiful and happy place to live, though the woodland animals were struggling to be considerate of one another this autumn. The summer had been beautifully warm and long, keeping them hard at work as they tried to make the most of the planting and gathering time they had. Fletcher Fox especially loved this time of year. The weather was not quite so hot anymore and the leaves were spectacular shades of maroon, gold, and russet. Everyone seemed to feel a spark of excitement with the changing weather and Fletcher Fox was no exception. Unfortunately, Fletcher Fox was realizing that there had hardly been any playtime with the other animals as they normally did. He had been spending all his time rushing about to hunt and save as much for himself as he was able. Becca Bear used to frolic at the riverbank with her friends each day, but instead she had been working on creating a tall pile of her favorite foods deep inside her bear den, hoping no one would ask her to share if they didn't know how much she had. They were her favorite foods, after all. Olivia Owl was normally very responsible, and so during her free time she loved to read all sorts of storybooks. This summer, however, she stayed up late each night reading her books rather than hunting for the group as she normally would have. She soon found that she had not saved enough food for the special Thanksgiving meal the animals shared every autumn. Sammy Squirrel, known to love racing with his friends up and down the papery birch trees, had instead spent his time hiding as many acorns as he could find and not telling a single other squirrel where he had hidden them. After all, if no one else knew where he had buried them, he could keep them all to himself instead of having to share. It was Sasha Sparrow that noticed the quandary first. Oh dear, she cried, fluttering about and checking the cellar for a second and third time. It can't be. Where is all the collected food for the Thanksgiving meal? The other animals came to inspect the cellar, ducking in to search high and low, but they found that it was true. Everyone had been so concerned about only saving enough for themselves and storing as much as they possibly could that they had forgotten all about taking the time to work together for the big holiday meal. With nearly everything collected from the forest and stashed away, there was nothing left to go out and gather that could be enjoyed at the holiday table. The animals looked about at each other, feeling a bit embarrassed that they hadn't thought about anyone but themselves. They all sighed heavily, knowing there was nothing left to collect. It was Thanksgiving Day, and there was no food saved for cooking a meal. I suppose, began Fletcher Fox hesitantly, we would need to put all our food and supplies back into the forest so that there's something to collect again for dinner tonight. Everyone shifted about on their paws uncomfortably, not feeling very willing to give back the things they'd worked so hard to gather for themselves. Natalie Nuthatch muttered quietly to herself. Olivia Owl ruffled her feathers distractedly, and Becca Bear pronounced she shouldn't have to return any of her special items, for surely no one needed their supplies quite as much as she did. <clears throat> the animals sighed, huffed, and some even teared up. Without any resolution, Becca Bear was the first to lumber away. Soon after, Sasha Sparrow fluttered her wings and took off for her tree, muttering something about how long it took for her to build her five extra nests. It wasn't long after that that the rest of the woodland neighbors had all followed suit, each one slinking off to their burrows and dens, none of them willing to put their collections back into the forest. It seemed the special Thanksgiving meal was just not going to be possible this year. Back in their homes, the animals were looking over their private collections of food and supplies. Sure, they had plenty for themselves for the winter. Roland Rabbit realized there was such an excess, in fact, that much of it would end up going to waste. There was simply no way that he could eat all of that alone. Still, it was nice to know that it was all there just for him. Like all the animals, Roland Rabbit was beginning to feel quite disappointed that there wouldn't be enough for his favorite meal of the year. Surely there was something he could do to help so that everyone could have their favorite celebration back. Fletcher Fox was feeling just the same as Roland Rabbit and the others. What was the fun in having so many wonderful things to himself if it meant he couldn't get to enjoy them with his friends? He looked over all he had. He realized that he had plenty of crisp leaves in his den, enough for three whole beds. 
There was even enough food to last for nearly two winters. He realized what a lovely den he had. It was cozy, well-stocked, and it had all of his favorite things. His heart swelled as he began to feel very grateful for each comfort. Yes, he had all he needed to get through the winter and more. Everything, that is, except special time with those he loved most. In that moment, Fletcher Fox made up his mind about what was most important to him. Running to Sasha Sparrow's nest as fast as his four legs could carry him, he reached her breathless and excited with a fresh idea. Sasha Sparrow, I know just what to do so that we can have our Thanksgiving meal. Sasha Sparrow sighed, ruffling her feathers as she heard him approach. No one will put their supplies back, Fletcher Fox. I simply don't see any way to resolve our problems, dear. What if we don't have to put it all back? Perhaps we could all just share a bit of our collections. One thing from each neighbor, even. There would be plenty left over for ourselves for the winter time and plenty for the dinner, exclaimed Fletcher Fox. Sasha Sparrow considered this, looking about at her supplies. Surely there would be just one thing that she could do without for the good of everyone. She did love all her neighbors so very much and knew how happy the Thanksgiving dinner made everyone. Well, she whispered, becoming excited at the new idea, it seems that I have made five extra nests. I suppose that seems quite silly now, but I collected every fallen twig and dried grass I could find. I can't recall now why I thought I could even use so many, for I'm only one bird, after all. Perhaps I could weave a few of my extras together to create one big nest that could be used as your collection bowl. Would that be helpful? That's a wonderful idea. I will need something to carry the donations in. That would be very generous if you had some extra nests that we could use. Sasha Sparrow got to work using a bit of string from her supplies to lash the nests together, creating one large, sturdy bowl for Fletcher Fox to carry the collections in. Sasha Sparrow's heart also swelled then as she realized that not only did she still have an extra nest left over for herself, but she also had contributed something to help the friends she loved. In that moment, she loved the nests she made even more than when she, they had just been for her. They meant so much more to her now that they were going to be used by everyone. Fletcher Fox took the large nest in his mouth and set off for the home of each neighbor. One by one, every animal found that there was at least one thing they could contribute to the feast. Olivia Owl had lots of paper from her collection of books that could help to keep the fire going for the soup pot. The two books were happily added to the nest as Fletcher Fox set off for the next house. Everyone realized that they had more than enough left over for what they needed through the winter time if they shared a few things. Caleb Cardinal had lots of berries, for he had saved far more than he could ever eat by himself. It made him happy to think that others would get to enjoy them as well. Stephen Stagg had some extra corn he had harvested from the nearby field. Natalie Nuthatch had some twigs for kindling. Samuel Squirrel's family was happy to share their squash and acorns. And Fletcher Fox found he had plenty of leaves for everyone to sit on so that they could be made more comfortable during the meal. Before they knew it, the nest was as full as their hearts. Everyone realized how good it felt to be happy with all that they had and how much happier they felt still when sharing it with their friends. It occurred to them that when working together, so much more could be accomplished. It was as though the food seemed to multiply, as did their respect and gratitude toward one another. After visiting each hole, burrowed, nest, and den, Fletcher Fox could hardly carry the heavy nest because of all the wonderful donations he'd been given. He arrived in the meadow where they ate the holiday meal and found Sasha Sparrow already hard at work, setting up the fire for the big soup pot. The large table was already put out, flowers placed neatly on the table and lovely cranberry garlands draping artfully over them as they hung from the trees. Goodness, Sasha Sparrow, what beautiful decorations. Where did you find cranberry garlands with everything already harvested? Well, she replied happily, I had still more string left over with no use for it and plenty of berries. I never really cared for cranberries too much anyhow. Perhaps Becca Bear might enjoy them as a snack after we take the decorations down. Fletcher Fox was touched by her extra donations. I think this may be the very best Thanksgiving yet, Sasha Sparrow, he murmured contentedly, looking around at the beautiful meadow, with a heart so thankful for all they had. All the neighbors arrived one by one, eager to help set up for the holiday dinner. Fletcher Fox spread his leaves around the table for seating. Olivia Owl helped to add the paper and kindling to the fire for the soup. Stephen Stagg helped to hang a few last-minute lanterns with his antlers. Becca Bear used her paws to add all the lovely ingredients to the soup pot. 
The neighbors milled about as the food cooked, chatting to one another happily about the things they found to add to the Thanksgiving nest. The soup pot was nearly overflowing with the donated food, the delicious aroma filling the air with the reminder of everyone's generosity and love. The Thanksgiving meal had been saved. What's more, it turned out to be the very best holiday meal they'd ever had, each one with a full tummy and heart. Everyone was thankful for the help from their neighbors. Everyone had a new appreciation for all that they had in their homes, and most of all, they felt quite proud of themselves for how they worked together. When each person gave just a bit to share, all together it amounted to quite a lot. The animals decided that from then on, they would always share their wintertime harvest with one another. It was a merry holiday indeed. At the end of the book, here are some discussion points about sharing. And I hope you enjoyed that.